And I was like, see, what pisses me off about fucking LinkedIn too. Like, and I think just people in general. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you can learn so much about whatever marketing and sales and other stuff if you look outside of that realm of knowledge. Sure. So, for example, like me marketing and applying scientific Science, principles yeah. to it, right? 100%. And even like even scientists themselves and like product creators, the best products are. If, even if you look at all pictures on Shark Tank, the best products are the ones that actually Fake. are outside the realm. Like they took some level of ma like military yes. material yeah. and made it into some, some and yeah. added some consumer product. That's freaking sweet. That's the whole concept. Like innovation is driven by that. That, that yeah. Product, right? Yeah. Like why don't you take a an industry that has trillions of fucking dollars on innovation and R and D, and just and steal that shit yeah. and just build what it for cheap. It? There's a book I read that says exactly that. Innovation is driven from, not from within, but from outside, mm. right? Because, you know, you feel like there's people who- Confucius at, say. Yeah, no, no, but it's true, right? <laughs> it's almost that way. It's like, look at nature. But, you know, like, think about how, you know, like inventors were trying to figure out to emulate how birds fly to create a flying machine. Yeah. It's yeah, not from yeah. science or military. It's really from oh, nature. Totally disconnected. Yeah. Right? So, to me, I believe, believe it. And that's where the, the ultimate creative, creativity comes from. Is if, you look at an, if you look at a problem from outside. Like, like, even, like even Elon, when he's talking about... Like he talked about this thing where... Uh, when he was building SpaceX. Yeah. He realized, like, one, it was, it was, it would have been really stupid for him to purchase, like, build a new rocket from the ground up. Yeah. So instead, he decided to break down all the components of a rocket um, down to first principles. So it was yeah. essentially like, what's the material? What's the material cost? And yeah. so on and so forth. All the stuff that can't really be changed. Um, and he decided, you know what, it'd be a lot cheaper for me to just purchase whatever, like an older rocket and just kind of just like re-up it a little. Yeah. And just like, that's fucking brilliant. But he learned that from physics and mathematics and even like Tesla itself. Like if he followed the same model that every other car manufacturer did, yeah. like Ford or Honda, he'd be fucked. He would not have business whatsoever. Yeah. But since he started thinking about like Tesla, Nikola, yeah. and like yeah. electricity and, and batteries. But, but isn't that the whole definition of disruption, right? When you disrupt an industry, you say you bring something that's either faster, less expensive, it serves a different need, it's applied in a different way. The whole concept of disrupting an industry, a vertical, is based solely on that, right? Mm. A, a reimagination yeah. of uh, the solution to the same problem. Thinking outside the box. Yeah. Like this, I still remember this one guy off Shark Tank. <laughs> I watched it a lot. Um, yeah, I do too. The this one guy. Remember that one guy who created like um, like a bag or, or like you know when you blow up a balloon yeah. and you put your entire mouth over a suction piece and then you just blow at it. Yeah. But then he figured out an easier way was just stop wrapping your mouth around the fucking nozzle and just like open it up and blow straight into it and it immediately yeah. opens up like when you blow into a bag from far yeah. away and he figured out some like thing i think it, it ultimately failed actually that product but i was like this is fucking brilliant all right and it's just like use it's just a simple use of physics yeah. i was just like what the fuck this is why i keep telling you man the one thing about science that i appreciate the most is it's there is no magic formula to any theory or any hypothesis that you have, or any person has, we know it hands down. Like the only way you're ever gonna make a real living as a scientist is by continuously, whatever, getting grants and all that sure. kind of stuff and doing your research, getting paid by universities, whatever it may be, yeah. to you know, prove out your research, like through trial and error, through experimentation. But and then what scares me in the marketing world when I entered it was, like everyone's saying, oh, like 
Look at all these fuckers on Facebook ads who are like, well, oh, the, the fucking with the Maserati in the fucking back or a Lambo in the back <laughs> being like, uh, you want to know how to make like six figures in like 30 days? I'm like, how about you fuck off? But that's their bit. But right? that's, that's the stupidest thing because it's like, no, no, but come on. If it's really that fucking easy. No, 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 no. It's easy for them because they're selling you on that dream. There's <sighs> their product and their offering is the dream that I can make you rich in 30 days doing whatever. Yeah. At face value though. At face you're you're buying your people are buying into that kind of I don't want to say desperation, but they want somebody to reinforce the notion that it's possible, right? But all you're doing is you're reinforcing their business opportunity, which is, you know what, my idea is that I'm gonna pretend that I became wealthy. Yeah doing something yeah. and I'm going to sell that. Yeah. That's their product, yeah. right? This is no different from fucking, okay, so the number of marketers <laughs> that say they got into marketing because they saw like, oh, I want to build that billboard or like, that seems easy. I'm like, you guys are idiots. That's a glamorous life, right? Like, how many, like, I can't tell you how many people I've interviewed who didn't quite get what marketing consulting or marketing technology consulting was. Yeah. And they sit there and say, Oh, I want to do like, yeah, I'm fascinated with marketing. I said, oh, what aspect of marketing are you interested in? Oh, you know, like those print ads and all my fuck. I want to be like Nike and like, I'm, I kid you not. That's what they think. Marketing, that's their understanding yeah. of marketing. Of marketing. Is that I want to be, yeah, I'm going to just create logos and slogans and taglines and advertising. Sure, that's an element. That's an aspect. The the very, in the very small element of it all. But that's not like, so it's, it's just, you know what it is? Marketing is just really about just helping people, reinforcing people's dreams that it's possible, right? Like feeding off of people's naivete of that it can be done easily. Come on. If it was so fucking easy, everyone would be doing it. That's as simple as that. But don't you, but that's what I'm afraid of. Cause it's like you, everyone's being fed a goddamn yeah. lie. But as long as you know the difference, you know that it's going to take a lot of sweat and time and energy, and it's not going to always be successful. That's the life lesson is that as long as you can accept it, that, that whatever shit that people are feeding you, that it's easy, that, that a quick, you know, get quick, get rich quick scheme yeah. is just not possible. It's yeah. not real. Yeah. It's only real to the sub, to the guy who's selling it and the suckers who are buying it, yeah. right? It's mm. not real. It's not legitimate. Like if you want to build a legitimate business, you want to be legitimately successful, however you define your own success, yeah. it's fucking tough. Accept it, right? This is why I like shows like, like as, as Hollywood as Hollywood dies as it may be, like Shark Tank and Dragon's Den, because like it, there's a sense of reality yeah. to like, look, you're not always going to get an investment or like, yeah. you know, people tell you straight up, like your business sucks. Like what does Kevin O'Leary say? Like take it behind a bar and shoot it. <laughs> I appreciate him probably the most. Um, yeah, he's very pragmatic. Exactly. And but that, that kind of puts things in perspective sure. that like these fuckers like Ty Lopez who will just go around his fucking rented house. Yeah. Like with his rented Lambos, just for the one it's video shoot. I hope he's not watching this, but um, yeah, it's it's those fuckers that are just like stop selling people on a goddamn lie. Like stop saying that it's gonna be easy to make millions of dollars. It's not easy. Like our economy doesn't even have like a million. Like if every person on the planet got paid a million bucks, I don't think we would have. An, I don't think we even have enough that much money produced <laughs> to even do that. Jesus. I'm sure you saw that part. I don't know what it, where it was. Bill Gates, you know, when he was trying to, to stand up Microsoft, right? He says, oh, I met, uh, I met with 900 people or express, uh, sent out, you know, letters or invitations to meet, uh, with 900 people. Only 30 of them responded. I met with 15, you know, 10 of them were interested enough to carry on the conversation. And I ended up partnering with three. Mm. So even, you know, you can sit there and say, oh my God, Microsoft is behemoth of a company, but you don't appreciate what Bill Gates had to do to get it to that point. I think that's, 
that's the, the it just reinforces that that kind of uh, dream, right? Yeah. So you know how there's like there's those shallow people who see things at face value, and like one I just can't be friends with, because it's like one unless you're willing to learn like the real complexity of it all, then you're, you're a goddamn idiot. Um, I forgot what I was going with that. You were gonna mention KFC. Oh yeah! <laughs> like everyone's looking at KFC like, oh KFC is like this huge like franchise, blah blah blah, fried chicken, blah. But the guy started in his what sixties? Yeah, sixty-five. Selling fried chicken door to fucking yes. door. Yes, this is my point, right? Like it's like we see it at the tail end. It's like, oh my god, you know how fortunate, how lucky, how easy it was for all these successful entrepreneurs. Well, nobody saw. The shit that they went through to get to that, right? The whole interview with Elon Musk. It's the same thing. You hear him about, oh yeah, you know, my brother and I when we started, you know, we were showering at the Y and this and that. You don't, you know, that's never kind of talked about. But it's all talked about, you know, like how much money you generate from PayPal and all this. This shit. is the importance of looking at historical data that a lot of people don't fucking do, especially marketers. Yeah. Like it's a, it's astounding when. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, some of the videos I post on LinkedIn, like, it sometimes goes over people's heads. Because, <laughs> like, the last video when I talked about CX, I was talking about, like, okay, like, look, marketing is still in the growth phase in that Investopedia graph. Yeah. Right, of the maturity of an industry. Yeah. Whereas science, military, whatever, all the engineering, they've been around for, like, centuries, right? We've been building shit for centuries yeah. and, like, millennia. While are we not replicating and looking at that historical data and understanding like where the industry is really going to grow rather than talking about dumbass buzz terms like ABM and big data. I'm sure there are people doing it. And fucking AI. Right. Yeah, but I don't know. It's, it's so hard to find those people. Yeah. I don't know. They're all like in the, in the weeds somewhere. It's interesting stuff, man. I don't know. Like it's just, I, I guess that's just everything that I've learned is anything worthwhile is an easy. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. And everyone would be rich, yeah. Right? So. so you're going to just slug away? Commit? What else can you do? This is life. <laughs>